This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Leaders only work with leaders. Leaders will only work with someone who is they view as a peer or someone who is at a level above them that they can learn from. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is The Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy Liz Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your Liz Building Lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the Liz Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafetz. And today, I am truly excited to be hosting my guest, who's based out of Austin, Texas. And uh, he's a serial entrepreneur who started and grew several major projects that have collectively changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. He went from waiting tables to making seven figures and eventually becoming a role model for men and women all over the planet who are passionate about shaping the world around them according to their dream vision. Now, of course, I'm talking about Mike Dillard, and Mike has a passion for racing off-road and on, and when he's not flying down the track at 160 miles per hour, he spends his days helping entrepreneurs realize their worthy goals at selfmansociety.com. Now, make sure you go ahead and check that out right now to see how you can link arms with Mike in your pursuit of living the list building lifestyle. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce to you, with great pleasure and honor, Mr. Mike Dillard. Hey, Igor. Happy to be here, brother. Like I said before we started, Mike, I truly appreciate you taking the time. You're really busy helping so many people. And uh, I've been waiting for this call for a little while now. I've been really getting ready because I believe what we're going to share with our listeners on this call alone can truly be a game changer. <laughs> no pressure on me then. <laughs> absolutely no pressure on you. No, I'm, I'm excited to be here and looking forward to it. And I will do my absolute best. All right. So another quick introduction, you know, how I came across your work. I first discovered your work when I stumbled into magnetic sponsoring. That was way back when a training program you designed to empower network marketers, because I started network marketing, to basically to use the internet to attract their ideal clients. So instead of you know, me going out there chasing people, you were teaching guys like me how to stop knocking on doors, stop doing the cold calls and uh, have the internet bring customers over to you. And like I said, that was like a long, long time ago. So what have you been up to lately? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, it seems like a long time ago. But when you think about it, I was at that book actually came out nine years ago. So it wasn't too long, but it's amazing how much has happened since then. Gosh, you know, these days I really have two passion projects. One is Self Made Man and the podcast there. And the goal for that project is to really empower men specifically. It is, we have a ton of female fans as well. But the goal was to empower young men in this current generation with mentors and role models and leadership that is becoming more and more rare especially for guys who are in their 20s. And so that was really the goal behind that platform. And it's done it's done really, really well. It's one of the top podcasts on iTunes these days. And then my future project, which I've been working on for almost two years now, is actually in the hydroponic food space. Uh, one of my biggest goals is to put clean, healthy, pesticide-free food back on people's dinner tables at a price that everybody can afford in case you know, you're like most people and you can't afford to shop at, at Whole Foods every week. And uh, so that's that's a pretty neat project. I'm working with some absolutely amazing people that I'll be able to to share more about as we reach the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. So that's uh, what I've been up to. Wow. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, way to make a difference. And, uh, you know, truly, I can only applaud uh, what you're trying to achieve here because your goals seem to be always bigger, you know, than yourself. They're bigger. They're like a huge mission. And um, most people I talk to, all they think about is the money, money, money. You know, at most, they're talking about their families. But, you know, very few people take on this challenge to change the world. And it seems like, you know, you've been doing just that for a very long time now. So I'm looking forward to uh, diving into the story of how you went from being ultra broke to making over $50 million, owning and flipping several mega successful companies and all in a span of less than a decade. And specifically, I'd love to focus on the transformation you went through as a self-made man and, and basically have you share with our listeners 
what were some of the core changes you were forced to make when it comes to your inner game to become truly wealthy, not just rich? Sure. It was quite a journey. And I think it was really solidified with some words of wisdom from one of my sponsors or upline members way back when. And I don't know if this is exactly how he put it, but I'll summarize, which is that if you want to achieve a certain result, you have to become a person who is capable of achieving that result. Especially in the network marketing industry, when you're first getting started, it's very easy to fall into the trap of the shiny marketing system or the ground floor opportunity that is going to make you rich and be responsible for your results. And so I spent the first five years of my time in that world really pursuing those things, looking for the shiny new marketing system or the the bright new company. And I failed every single time. I, I don't I, you know, I, I never made a dollar, struggled at it tremendously. And yet at every single one of these companies, there were always people walking across the stage and always people making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And so the common thread between all of them and my failures was me. And so after pursuing that for five or six years, I really had to stand back and and ask myself what was going on. And what I realized is that all of the people who were having success and making money had become amazing at something, whether it was speaking from stage or holding hotel meetings or home parties or teleconferences or whatever it may be, they had figured out their superhuman trick and had mastered that. And they'd been able to uh, use that skill set to achieve the results that they were getting. And I'd watched some of them go from one company to another to another. And within the first few months, they were always one of the top earners uh, you know, in those businesses. So that was really the big epiphany for me is that you know my success was not going to have anything to do with the business or the opportunity, the marketing pieces. It was going to have to do with my particular skill sets. And up until that point in time, I had not mastered any. So that was epiphany number one. Number two is, okay, how do I want to build this business? And I'm, you know, especially back then, super shy, super introverted person. I hated the idea of talking to prospects on the phone or in person. So I was probably the absolute worst personality type that you could ever stick into the network marketing industry because it is such a people-based business. Yet nonetheless, I wanted to figure it out. I had, I had spent you know five or six years up until that point trying to, to succeed in this industry and I wasn't going to leave until I had. And so I started to think about ways that I could recruit people, talk to prospects and build my business that would be in sync or you know had some synergy to my business personality and, and what I was starting to discover were my talents, which really came down to writing and writing uh, you know, sales copies specifically. So I was absolutely horrible at, at selling people on the phone in person, but I was really, really good at writing sales presentations and sales copy. So that really led to the discovery of direct response marketing through guys like Dan Kennedy and Yannick Silver. And I realized that, hey, you can actually educate people, tell them the story about the business or the product and sell them on the entire opportunity without actually having to ever speak to anyone, you know, until they were ready to get started. So that's really what I started to focus on was, you know, using Google AdWords. I taught myself how to use Google AdWords, put up a capture page, and I started advertising online and taking people through a marketing funnel that would tell them the story and sell them the product or service before I ever spoke to them. And, uh, you know, at that time it was, hey, when you're ready to get started, if this seems like a good fit for you, here's my contact information and give me a call and, you know, we'll bring you on to the team. And, you know, part of the, 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 the piece around that which made it work so well, which is what I really talk about in magnetic sponsoring is the leadership aspect. You know, when it comes to that industry specifically, one of the big epiphanies that I had was that you have to be a leader in order to make money by default. This is demanded by the very nature and the structure of the compensation plans in network marketing, where if you don't build a team and if you don't lead a team, you don't make money <laughs> ever. So that was an interesting piece of the puzzle where if you, want to make money, you've got to be a leader. And when it comes to recruiting, you've got two options. You can recruit people who are brand new to the industry, who have no idea what they're doing, and 90% of whom are going to quit fairly quickly. And then you can recruit rock stars and all stars and people with a proven track record of success in that world. And I read an analogy somewhere. I don't remember where it was, but I, you know, it was akin to a, a football team. If you owned an NFL football team, are you going to place an ad in a newspaper to, you know, recruit 
your next quarterback, like most business owners do in the network marketing industry, they just place ads and you know on the web or wherever, and they'll take anyone who says yes. Or are you going to recruit the absolute best professional quarterback out there from another team, or you know who might be in between teams at the moment that you can? And for me, it was it was a no brainer. I'm really going to focus on recruiting other proven leaders so that I don't have to hold their hands. They know what they're doing. They can come in day one and and start to produce. Now, one of the interesting pieces to the psychology of, well, how do you actually do that is leaders only work with leaders. Leaders will only work with someone who is they view as a peer or someone who is at a level above them that they can learn from. So that raises an interesting point, which means if you want to recruit those types of people, you have to become those types of people. And the best way that I found to do that was to really increase my value to the world, to gain expertise, to increase my skill sets. And as I became better and better at online marketing, direct response marketing and writing copy, and I had more value to the world and more to teach others and more to offer others, I naturally became a leader and I naturally became a peer of those individuals. Uh, And that's how I built my first really big team, meaning I was the number one residual income earner in that company. I recruited a grand total of 15 people over the course of probably three or four months. But all of those people were proven uh, leaders in the industry. They knew what they were doing. I think five of them went on to become you know, among the top five uh, producers in the company. And so it was the absolute easiest team that I had ever built in my life. It was the most profitable that I had ever built. I'd put the least amount of work into it and time into it that I ever had to. But it was built on the foundation of five and six years of failure and trying to figure this out and really investing in myself. In the recent episode of The Self-Made Man, when you were talking to Tony Robbins, uh, you guys discussed how you at some point made the shift of thinking about making money and instead serving the marketplace or giving value. And you just briefly mentioned as well that you decided that in order to become the leader that other leaders would want to work with, you need to become that man of value. So how did you acquire that expertise? What did you do in order to acquire and build in within yourself, build all that value so you could then go ahead and share it with the world. You know, the old fashioned way, buying every book and course that I possibly could, going to every training event that I possibly could. You know, I really got into writing copy and I probably spent, oh gosh, a couple thousand dollars in my first year as much as I could possibly afford on, on different books and courses. And I would, uh, you know, spend at least two hours a night reading, writing, and studying copy for well over a year, year and a half. And, you know, there's no shortcut around putting in the work. If you really want to have long term success and transform your life in a a fundamental way, there is no shortcut around the work. That's why so few people actually achieve, you know, those levels of results because most people aren't willing to put in the effort and the time. So my feeling is, you know, around this, if you can't, if you can't shortcut it, if you have to get it done, just go ahead and dive in and, and get through it as soon as you humanly possibly can. Because it's going to take you at least two to three years just to get really good at something. But yeah, it's just the old fashioned way. It's becoming obsessed with with achieving a result and putting in the time. You know, it's it's funny that you mentioned copy because we talk a lot about copy on the Elizabeth and Lifestyle Show. And, you know, we interviewed John Carlton, Daniel Levis, and a bunch of other copywriters that, you know, always come in and like the common denominator is influencing through media and writing and you know i personally believe that the number one bread and butter skill for any internet marketer regardless of what they sell or the kind of value they want to give is the ability to persuade and print and be able to you know walk a mile in your customer's shoes which is a big part of what copywriting is all about but what would you say to someone who has the internal belief that they're not a great writer and not a natural born salesman. So are they still able to master copywriting? Well, that, you know, really comes down to figuring out how you are wired. And I'm not going to say that, yes, everybody can do that because I, you know, realistically, that's probably not the case. And the example that I'll use is maybe you're wired and your, your brain is made to be an engineer. Maybe you are very quantitative. You love numbers. You love structure you love coding and all of that stuff. So if you're wired like that, you can learn the basics of 
persuasion, but you're probably never going to master it just as I might be able to learn the very, very fundamentals of of code and, and that stuff. But I absolutely hate it and I'll never be great at it because I don't, my brain is not wired for that. I'm never going to have a passion for that. It's going to be a frustrating experience whenever I attempt to get into it. And so I think it's really important for people to figure out what they're wired for and to really, you know, pursue a game plan that is synergistically aligned with that instead of fighting it. All right. So as the expert in the field, as someone who who basically went through this transformation, in case, you know, the list builders who are listening to the show right now are not wired for copy, what are some of the other perhaps top three skills that they might become masters at to replace this element? Sure. Great question. The great part about this is that there is a natural marriage when it comes to sales out there in the world. And it's one that I've been using and, and had to use my really for the majority of my entire career. And that is the marriage between the creative content producer or the writer, if you will, and the engineering traffic guy. Let's just call him the traffic guy. Two completely different brains, two completely different ways of looking at the world, two completely different skill sets, but both equally important when it comes to sales and marketing. One cannot live without the other. And so for me, you know, my talent is obviously on the copy side and the content side. So I can produce these fantastic training products. I can produce these great courses and sales letters that convert, but I need someone who can put eyeballs in front of them. And so for me, I've always had a second part of the equation, which is my traffic guy. And so this is the person that runs, you know, currently my Facebook advertising campaigns in the past, it was Google AdWords, whatever it may be. And that person is a totally different skill set. And so to me, those are the two most valuable skill sets out there right now, because if you can master either one of those, your ability to make money or sell a product or service is really unlimited at that point. And then the third skill set, you know, essentially be the manager uh, role, if you will. And so maybe you're a natural people person, a natural leader, a natural manager. And that role for you is to combine a traffic guy and combine a content guy and build a company and scale that company. And so, you know, those are really the three roles that I see out there, at least the primary ones that ideally everyone can find a fit in um, on some level or another. All right. So we're getting closer to the end of this interview. And I just like to ask you one more question. So you are the guy who uh, pretty much introduced me to list building. And, you know, that's been one of the major angles of uh, magnetic marketing, building a list, building a following, building a tribe and having that communication, the relationship with your marketplace. So you've ever since built lists into the millions. I mean, I I think the most recent figure I've seen was that your self-made man following is about almost half a million subscribers now. So what is the number one list building tip that you would share with a beginner list builder? You have to buy it. (laughs) And and when I say you have to buy it, I don't mean buy your list because that doesn't work. You have to buy the traffic. And so, you know, there's two ways to build a list. That is to put your content out there for people to opt into on an organic level, either through a blog or through videos or through social media or whatever it may be. But there's no scale with that and there's no leverage. And so if you want to build a large list quickly, you have to advertise. You have to spend money on marketing like any other real company does. And in order to spend money on advertising, let's say $500 to $1,000 a day, you know, if you want to generate 500 opt-ins a day, a typical business can produce those opt-ins for about $5 a piece. You've got to spend $2,500 a day. And obviously, that's a lot of money for anyone to spend. Well, the good news is that your customer can actually pay the bill for that. And so for me, my formula has always been the same. It's buy paid advertising, you know, get people to opt into the list, offer those people fantastic quality products. So, you know, once they buy one, they'll want to buy more to where that person who, you know, opted in and it cost me five bucks for their opt-in ends up spending 50 to $500, you know, in the next one to two weeks. And so once you have that kind of marketing funnel in place, well, you can spend as much as you, you know, care to spend and grow your list as fast as you want to grow it. So that to me is the secret to building a huge list very quickly is having a marketing funnel in place that converts and that allows you to buy traffic and put thousands of people in front of your your website on a daily basis. 
I love it how it circles back to the old Dan Kennedy saying, if you can't spend a dollar to get a customer, you ain't got a business in the first place, which, you know, I believe to be very, very true. That's why I got into the pay traffic game in the first place. And now, I mean, hearing that coming to, you know, coming from you, it, it just reassures that for me. So, Mike, thank you so much for visiting, for, uh, you know, sitting down with us and repping about list building. List builders, make sure you go ahead and sign up, subscribe for the Self Made Men podcast and check out W www.selfmademensociety.com. You can sign up for $1 and get into Mike's world where he helps you grow your business, grow your wealth, and make a difference in the world. So Mike, until next time we talk, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Igor. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to The List Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.